Brian. And I'm Shukla. And for our project, we are going to submit a fact sheet on genetically modified organisms and best practices to the New Jersey Experimental Agricultural Station. And in lieu of watching us submit something on a computer, we're going to go around and ask people what they know about GMOs and what their opinions are on them. By 2020, the world's population is expected to rise to 7.5 billion people. One way to help alleviate the need for food with that large a population is using genetically modified organisms for human consumption. While the growth of using genetically modified organisms and plants contains risks, a best management practice is implied to reduce these. So, as we said before, we're going to ask people uh, around Rutgers what they know and don't know about genetically modified foods and organisms. And so, basically, we're going to try to find out uh, what people know and try to educate them about the facts about GMOs. Okay, we're uh, here with my friend Varun. And so, Varun, I believe you're a biology major, right? Uh, yes, sir. You are? So, what do you know about genetically modified organisms? Well, genetically modified organisms are becoming all the rage nowadays. So, Vern, do you know what genetically modified organisms are? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. Do you have any idea, like, the prevalence? How much How much do you think are around in, like, food or animals? Uh, I wouldn't think there was that much in animals, but food industry uh, is definitely increasing. Uh, with all the, you know, advanced technology, I definitely think that um, a lot of foods are becoming more genetically modified. Uh, they're becoming, it's better for us, too, having genetically modified food. If you had genetically modified fish or beef, uh, would you be able? Would you eat it? Um, as long as it's been approved by the FDA, I don't see why reason not. Because I mean, FDA regulates. You know, if there's regulations on the food, then yeah, I, I see no problem. With it. Okay. What percentage of like fruits and vegetables in the supermarket do you think are genetically modified? Uh, I'd say probably ten percent. Ten percent? Less that. Probably less five, than ten. Uh, yeah, five to ten percent. Okay. Well, actually, it's a lot more. It's up around sixty percent. And they do a bunch of different things. They have, you know, pesticide proof and ones uh, produce that you don't need herbicides to use, so it reduces the car, co uh, cost a lot. What kind of regulations would you like to see in genetically modified foods? Um, we'll make sure you know, of course, it's, there's no harmful is uh, harmful to our health. That's obviously number one. Um, make sure it's cost effective. Great. Okay. Well, take this. This pamphlet has some information on genetically modified foods and other organisms. It gives you some idea of what's the good, the benefit, and what the best practices are. Thank you. Thank you. Pigs, like the one seen behind me, can be also be genetically modified to be more environmentally friendly. About 125 million people in the world are considered to be vitamin A deficient. Growing genetically modified rice can be fortified with vitamin A to account for this. Some of the most common genetic modifications to plant crops include herbicide resistance and built-in insecticides. Hi, this is Danielle. She's a bio major here at Rutgers. Hello. And so what do you know about genetically modified organisms? So, um... Monsanto is a company that has permits set out for their GMOs to prevent uh, hybrids being uh, incorporated into the crop and farming system and to keep a consistent product throughout generations. Uh, I guess I agree with it so that we don't have uh, issues with the crops and that customers can continually get a consistent products uh, that's reliable. Would you eat anything? Yeah, I eat genetically modified food all the time. I also eat organic as much as I can, but GMOs, I mean, it's, uh, it's a consistent good product, so why not? It's currently estimated that 60% of foods on grocery shelves now contain genetically modified products. The first genetically modified fruits that were produced were tomatoes in 1994. These tomatoes lengthened the ripe ripening time so they'd have longer shelf lives. And, uh, I'm here with Eddie, he's a uh, biotech major, and we're just going to find out what he knows about GMOs and uh, give him a few facts, so what, what do you know about GMOs? Um, well, it's genetically modified organisms, and they're just different from like the regular wild type strains that are usually around, uh, that are regularly found in nature. Alright, do you have any reservations about um, 
uh, eating a genetically modified plant? Uh, not as long as it's deemed safe. Alright, um, would your opinion change if uh, it were a genetically modified animal, for instance, genetically modified salmon? Uh, oh, to eat it? Yeah. Uh, probably not. Again, as long as it's safe and as long as it's been, you know, there's no uh, harmful effects. Um, what risks do you think are involved with growing genetically modified plants and raising genetically modified animals? Um, I just think any byproducts that might be uh, accruing, especially if it's a, an organism like a salmon, like you said, um, if it starts uh, transcribing those genes and things, then all of a sudden it starts producing byproducts that could be harmful, not to the animal, but to anybody that eats it. So, yeah, do you think of, like, allergies and... Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's definitely a, a big factor, especially with, like, the plants and stuff. Okay. Research at Rutgers has indicated that the incorporation of genetic material into the plastids of certain plants can reduce the amount of genetically modified DNA that makes it into the pollen carried by those plants. <laughs>